Nasher Exchange is an exhibition organized by the Nasher Sculpture Center that celebrates the Sculpture Center's 10th anniversary. It's a citywide event. We have commissioned 10 artists, Dallas-based, national, international, to create 10 new works in 10 locations all over Dallas. Nasher Exchange is the first museum organized exhibition of public sculpture in the United States. So it sets new ground primarily because it's being organized by a museum for the general benefit of the public. The artists who are participating in Nasher Exchange represent a wide variety of practices along the spectrum of ways to engage the public realm. Lara Marsegui is an artist who works within spaces that are in transition, particularly urban environments in transition. My intention was to adapt to what is going on in Dallas. So there's this urban renewal thing going on in this neighborhood. We had to find partners. The partner was Habitat for Humanity. They are working a lot in Oak Cliff and they are renovating and constructing a lot with the idea to give a new uh, future to the neighborhood. And then I came uh, uh, with this proposal of barring a construction. We had to find a house that was scheduled to be demolished. What we did was to excavate a hole on the back of the yard, and then we started the demolition of the house. We start with the brick walls, and we put the brick walls into the hole, and then the whole house uh, fall down. Then slowly we put all the remains of the house into the hole and then we cover it uh, with earth. So this is what you are seeing now, a mold um, with a house inside. When a place is empty, everything is possible there. There are places really for dreaming, for thinking. Uh, there are blank spots, uh, which are really places of freedom. They are really necessary. This is what my work produces uh, almost all the time, a discussion about the place, which I hope it will happen here. We are creating an installation that the patron can visit, be involved in the documentation of a one-night event, and that documentation will be incorporated into a filmed info commercial that will be broadcast on television. Um, One-night-only events was something that we always did for our existence before, and it's a main component of our project for the National Exchange. And 297. <laughs> yeah. Follow me down this dark hallway to the first stage. I'd like for you to crawl on the dance floor in front of this giant weird head and cut. It's two parts, really, because there's the visitors that come to the piece that's physical that you walk through. Just dance around for about 30 seconds and cut. And then the piece that's going to be on TV is nationwide. So there's two different goals, more or less, but two different possible endpoints. And what I'm going to ask you guys to do is take a cane Go into the center of the stage and hobble like you're an old person. One of the things about Nasher Exchange that I thought was uh, very uh, encouraging, very optimistic, was the idea of spreading the art out to the people. And for the grand finale, everyone's been watching you the whole time. We, with the idea of using television as our medium, expanding the footprint even for to people in their own homes late at night in an info commercial form, which we thought uh, hadn't been subverted to its full potential. Rachel Harrison is an artist who works with objects from popular culture as well as a myriad of references from art history. And in fact, Rachel Harrison is one of the artists who had never done public sculpture before. She happened upon the wonderful Henry Moore sculpture on City Hall Plaza. And the day she was visiting, it happened to be um, surrounded by metal barricades, which they have to do occasionally to protect it during very large events on the plaza. And this resonated with her own work, where she often incorporates those kind of museum stanchions or barriers. And so she decided to create essentially a sign. She prefers to call it a sign rather than a sculpture, a very tall pink arrow that would simply point to that great work of public art that's already on the plaza. It was really designed to be a focal point and to be 
a kind of organic and curvaceous counterpoint to the severe geometry of the building and, and the openness of the plaza. And also, he created it so that people can move in and among the various elements of that sculpture. But um, people don't seem to use it that way. And so what Rachel Harrison really hopes to do by placing a very large pink arrow next to the sculpture is to get people to notice it and to move through it the way that Moore had intended. The question I ask myself is, how do we celebrate the anniversary of this institution? What is the most generous act that this institution can do? Why don't we celebrate the birth of others? That would be the most general thing we can do. In order to, to make this celebration, we're gonna record the first cries of newborn babies in three Dallas hospitals. These recordings will be placed inside this pavilion that I've built inside the National. So if your baby is born at 3 p.m., 15 minutes and 10 seconds, every day at that time, you can come and hear that first cry again and again. As these sounds will accumulate, because we will be recording every day during the entire exhibition, when you enter the space, you will hear a symphony of sounds, and they will superimpose on top of each other. And it's completely by chance, depending on the time the babies are born. These babies are entering the museum, not as spectators, but as performers, as artists themselves. And the kids themselves, they are getting a lifetime membership. So basically, in 10, 15, 20 years from now, we're gonna have thousands of new members that were born here in this installation, in this project. And with this, because of the outreach we're doing in certain communities that are not highly represented in the museum, I'm hoping to change the demographics of this institution. It's really about creating a space where the community can come together and celebrate life life of the new citizens of Dallas. My site is ATEC, which is a school of technology and art. When I first came to the site, it wasn't built, so I had to work just from the architectural plans, which is not really space, you know? So it was kind of um, virtual in its own way. This is the first full-scale model that I made of a piece uh, called X. The piece for me in, in this setting is a lot about the potential of X, the unknown. So this X is pretty much completely computer generated. We decided that for the opening we would show the model because ATEC is a lot about three-dimensional modeling and then bring out the stainless steel version for the opening of the school. It's really great for me to be able to see them both in the same place in this context. I hope it will be good for the students to understand a form in one-to-one -one scale with very different materials. I think they have a really different feeling and they give you a different sense of what what this is. I think a school like this is a place of potential for all of these students and actually for the future, like what our world is going to look like in the hands of the students that are here that are going to be making the artwork of tomorrow. I think this idea of having artists be dispersed throughout a large urban area is, is a great idea and um, it kind of questions like, is, is the whole city the museum then or, or is the museum the whole city? It's, it's, it's a really nice idea. I hope that when people come they get a sense of the energy in it, the movement in it and the sense of potential. So I'm a pretty hardcore sculptor. I really like object making, but I also do like to collaborate. I like to collaborate with amazing technicians. I like working with fabricators who work with crazy large tools and can take my little sketches and make them much bigger. And I like working with the public in a language that they actually know really well. So if this were just a sculpture carved like this, it'd be somewhat interesting. But I've put this animation happening on it, and they really relate. So I chose uh, to present a fountain of money, but a money fountain that the average person who is here consuming, supporting the economy, 
buying things at Louis Vuitton can play with and they can throw money onto the fountain and that money can go to charities. So I picked three local charities because I wanted it to be something very connected to the community. So when people were giving charities, it actually had a relationship to their lives. So to have this idol of money, this golden calf, and have these people around it laughing and throwing money at it, that's sculpture for me. And to have it here in this luxury court with these fabulous stores, it just makes it so much fun. But ultimately, we'll be raising a lot of money for some really important charities. I was invited by the Nasher to do a project, and they wanted me to do something in uh, a neighborhood. And when they brought me to Vickery Meadow, I, I came here, and it was an interesting dynamic with all the cultural diversity, because generally, we think of cultural diversity as being a positive thing, that's just an asset. But in this particular case, people were saying that Vickery Meadow is just a place of poverty with lots of crime. And so I question, you know, why isn't diversity an asset in this instance? And so the thing I started thinking about was maybe it's because there are a lot of diverse groups of people that live in this neighborhood, but they're not connected. And so how do you connect people who are from different cultures, different walks of life, speak different languages? And it occurred to me one day when I saw one person selling cotton candy on a stick on the street. And then I saw another person selling something off the back of the truck. And then it hit me. And I was like, wow. Markets, that's how people get to know each other. So I kind of got stuck on this idea that Vickery Meadow, maybe it needs a market. Maybe that would be a way to pull people together and look at the kind of the poetic gesture between uh, people coming together from different walks of life around the idea of culture. I call it social sculpture. You know, it's much more about trying to sculpt a social environment that is reflective of some value that we want to see or we want to project within our communities. And so what people see here is not a static sculpture. They see something that's in a process of sculpting. And over time, this kind of activity and this kind of event will start to resonate with people as being the new identity of Victory Meadow. I mean, that's the hope. Well, my art installation is a sort of personal um, desire that I had to acknowledge a school that no longer exists, but that I knew about when I first moved to Dallas. Uh, Bishop College was a really exciting place at one time. By the time I moved here in 1980, it was on the decline. And so a lot of people were not really acknowledging what this school had done for the city of Dallas. Even though it's Paul Quinn College now, these students ought to know what kind of ground they walk on. They need to know that this was here and that it's a great legacy to follow. So it was important for me to do something that would bring sort of dignity back to the name of Bishop College. And I had known about, obviously I'd known about some of the things that happened here, but I had no idea how much happened here. I had no idea how important this institution had been to this community either. I interviewed um, alums who had been involved in the, the arts here on the campus. I interviewed Harry Robinson and Ann Williams. Uh, Ann Williams, of course, founded the Dallas Black Dance Theater, and it was founded here on this campus. And then Harry Robinson founded the what is now known as the African American Museum. And so that's when I really got a sense of how critical this institution had been to the development of black arts in Dallas. We had people like Alex Haley, as he was writing Roots, Maya Angelou, she had just published I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, Nina Simone, Elia Pomare, Alvin Ailey, Arthur Mitch. I mean, all of these people were on this campus. And so I started looking at who on the campus were the key players in creating this whole cultural atmosphere. And I created these collages that are basically an homage to each one of them. What I'm hoping people take away from my installation is um, the idea that History is important, and we can't allow um, ourselves to forget a piece of history. Bishop College had a very rich, rich legacy that they left the city with. And the black arts in this city would not have developed the way they did without the legacy of Bishop College. I think like many other artists, I would draw as a child. I would draw, constantly draw. 
even this work, it's still kind of a form of drawing. I pretty much take material, whether it's galvanized fence posts or rebar, and draw with them in space now. Um, I'm still interested in the line and the form and mark making, and I think this achieves that still. The sculpture I did here for the Trinity Autobahn follows my thread of using galvanized fence posts, concrete footings, pretty much dirt, steel, and concrete, taking materials, repurposing them that are really existing out in the world and hopefully transforming them to create something um, somewhat like abstracting the social. They're loaded with social signifiers, how spaces are delineated and demarcated. And I think it works well with the Trinity Autobahn, how it used to be a dumping site and some of these materials have been repurposed to make my sculpture. Um, there were several sites we looked at and my first time here, I got a mini tour of all of Dallas. And um, in the end, we kept coming back to this site and it just seemed to fit with the space, having an, an outdoor sculpture that would contend with this environment. They kind of look like objects that are either sprouting out or growing out or also um, being situated into the space. There's a really nice driveway as you come into the Trinity Autobahn. And I think when they come, I think hopefully it'll be such a visceral experience when they come in and engage in it. They're already coming to see the, the Autobahn, which is a great site, but this is something they could stumble upon, seeing a sculptural object here where they could also navigate uh, and, and walk around through, see material that's been repurposed, retransformed, hopefully um, come off with some vivacity and hope of how materials could be repurposed. And it's one of the things that you put out there and uh, people could just engage with it and enjoy it or not. From the beginning, I said I don't want to have something that I have to bring in or doing in my studio and bring in as a finished sculpture. I wanted something that can be built here. I, I love public art because it brings together a complete new community who normally are not in touch with contemporary art or shy away because of different situation. It makes it harder to have access to gallery or museums. So public art, I, I like the situation that it's here and it can be enjoyed by everyone. And this way I came also with a, with a team or with, with, a, with a symbol of a peer, something that everybody can relate to. Even if it's not viewed as art, it still has a functioning as a, as a real peer. The peer is a romantic symbol, so it should attract maybe young couples sitting here, making out. When it came to the color of the pier, I knew that I wanted to have color on the pier, but I couldn't really decide. So I went with the easiest way to have the whole spectrum of the color. So I came up with the idea to paint it as a rainbow. And I like also that the pier, that it's called Dear Sunset, the pier camouflaged as a rainbow talks to another natural phenomenon. It's like the pier talks to the sunsets. I like this idea. The Nasher Sculpture Center was created by the Nasher family. Patsy and Raymond Nasher collected sculpture, and soon after they began collecting sculpture, they placed it at North Park Center, the shopping center. They opened in 1965. And if you go to North Park today, you'll see major works of art by some of the great artists of our time. So the notion of placing major works of sculpture in an unconventional public setting, bringing art directly into contact with people, was something that is in our history. So National Exchange is a way of reconnecting with our history, even as we reach out in a new way. Ray Nasher used to say, art is for everybody. And I think he meant by that, that great art could really change people's lives. But to do that, it couldn't just be limited, uh, confined to a private home or even an art museum. It had to go out to where people, to where people live, to where people work, to where they gather. That's what we're trying to do with National Exchange. And I think it's an extraordinary celebration.